Ready to get started on the second part of this video on how to build a gun rack. So far we've milled our material, cut our sides and our shells to exact size. We haven't done that with the cross rail on top yet because we want to make that fit exactly based on the depth of our dados and rabbits. We laid out for our, the gun rack with the pattern and then we also laid out for our dados and rabbits for the bottom shells. So in this segment, we're going to head over to the table saw and cut our dados and rabbits. At the band saw, we're going to cut the shape of the gun rack out. Use the spindle sander to smooth up all the edges and ease the sharp corners with a round over router. Now let's head over to the table saw. All right, we're over here at the table saw now. This time we've got a sled set up and a three quarter inch dado blade. I've got the stop block position to cut the rabbit on the bottom of both pieces. I'm going to make one cut switch boards without adjusting the stop block, make the other cut, then we'll readjust for the, the second cut. All right, we got both of our bottom rabbits cut. Now we're going to readjust the stop block to cut the second shelf, and this is where the marks on the edges come into play. It's not necessary to lay out both sides of the board, but I've found that helps prevent making two left sides. And we'll just repeat the procedure. Next I've laid out for the center divider between the two bottom shelves. Even though I've got this pretty well centered, I put a, an alignment mark on the end of each board. This way the same side goes against the stop block and then when we go to assemble it'll all match up and just in case it's a hair off, it will keep, it'll prevent the center divider from being crooked. So now I'll just set up the stop block and use the same dado setup without changing anything to cut these dividers. All right, we're back from cutting dados. We got a rabbit's cut in the bottom and for the shelf. And each of the shelves, we've got a dado cut for the center divider. Remember your rough cut list, the top rail seemed a little bit long. That's because we're going to take a section off of it and that'll be your center divider. Now, remember, this is too short to send through the planer on its own, so we kept it attached. And now we'll go ahead and dry fit and get some measurements. Now that we got everything dry fit together, we need to measure this the length of the center divider. The tendency is to grab the tape measure and start to measure. However, if there's any bow in these shelves, all you're going to do is permanently keep that bow there. So we want to measure this distance and then add in the depth of the dado. Now I know the tendency is to avoid math whenever you can and, I, and for accuracy reasons even sometimes, but this is one of those points or situations where you can't avoid it. All right, I'm back from cutting this to size. Be careful when you're cutting because no matter how well you measure and do your math, if you miss cut, it doesn't make any difference. So the next step is going to be to start cutting and shaping the gun rack to size. Now that it's time to shape the sides of our gun rack, you might be thinking, what am I doing at the drill press? need the bandsaw or the jigsaw. Remember the, on the layout diagram there were some measurements. Inch and three quarter radius, so far in and so far down. Well that's not only for laying out your pattern, that's for setting up a Forster bit. Inch and three quarters. And then what we'll do is create this jig and a fence system here that allows us to slide with a layout mark and right in the center of it align it with the layout mark on my board and I get consistency between both sides plus I'm not that good at cutting curves on the bandsaw so this will ensure all the curves and the arcs are identical and an identical placement between the two sides once you get the first mark into position clamp it down one recommendation is definitely use two clamps on your jig that way you only need one quick grip to support it while you're drilling. And let's drill our first hole. All right, now that we got our holes drilled, we're actually ready to start doing some of the cutting. If you don't have access to a bandsaw, you can also use a jigsaw to do the same operation. The only thing with the bandsaw is you got to think ahead because you could run into your throat. So just plan ahead on your cuts. 
When you're cutting, be sure to cut just outside of your line. This will leave a reference mark for you to sand down to. While cutting, if you get off your mark, don't stop and back up. Slow down, rotate the piece or rotate the jigsaw just a little bit more, and gradually get back to your line. This will avoid any jagged edges that will be difficult to sand out later. All right, we're done with the bandsaw. We got some rough marks to take care of. Perfect tool for that is this oscillating spindle sander. If you don't have access to one of these, file, rasp, and some sandpaper will do the same job. Just take a little bit longer. Remember the sander is not a saw. You should not have to sand off more than 1 16th or less of material. If you need to do more than that, return to the bandsaw or the jigsaw and trim it up. When using the oscillating sander, be sure to keep the material moving against the rotation of the spindle. Keeping it moving will prevent any divot in a smoother flowing transition. Keep in mind that any imperfections in the sanding and cutting job will only be mirrored or reflected when you ease the edges with the router. Well, it's coming along. Well, while we're still in that sanding mindset, let's, and before we do any assembly, let's separate all the pieces and attack them with a random orbit sander. All right, now that we're finished up with the sanding, we need to ease the edges of all these curves. And this is best done with a small router or even a full-size router, but a small quarter inch radius bit, round over. This way we can do both sides and it leaves the center for the wheel to trace. Now that the routering's done, you may need to go up and clean up some of the transitions or maybe you get a slight splinter where the router changed grain direction. Resist the tendency to grab the random orbit or an electric sander for this. You're either going to damage the sander or, or damage your workpiece. So just avoid that tendency. Well this wraps up part two on how to build a gun rack. You may be wondering why we haven't done anything with the top rail yet. Well, that requires an accurate measurement, so we want to get this assembled right here and then be able to measure between it without any hidden variables or unknowns. We can measure between them, transfer that measurement up. Just in case there's any bowage or warpage, we can correct that with an accurate measurement. In part three, we're going to go ahead and assemble the cabinet, cut this to size and shape it, do some final sanding, and finally apply a gloss finish.